So do you also want to work at an amazing company, maybe like Facebook? I lost my wife, my son, my family. I lost my job, a good career over at Facebook. Stunks. After watching my video today, you'll be able to learn some insights and some tips and tricks that will help you land your dream internship. I'll just start off with a bit of introduction. So I'm currently a senior at the University of Rochester, majoring in computer science. I've in the past interned at Facebook and I'll be joining Google in the future as a software engineer. So as you might have deduced that I did not go to a target school. So all of my tips and tricks will be based from that perspective. So I'll divide this video into two parts. Now the first part is entirely going to be focused on getting the interview. And the second part is going to be focusing on acing the interview. So let's just talk about getting the interview. So to get the interview, the first most important thing that you must have is your resume. And now everybody has a resume, but not everybody has a polished resume. So my number one tip for you would be to polish your resume as much as possible. Now there are two types of polish. One is that you might have experience, but you do not really know how to convey it. My best advice for you would be to send your resume to as many people as possible to get all those different perspectives from people so that you can really polish your resume from all the advice that you're getting. Focus on numbers. Numbers are a game changer in resume because they really show the impact that you had at your work experience. Instead of telling what you did, try to tell what kind of an impact your work had on the company. Well, all that is good, but what if you don't have relevant work experience? Well, my number one advice for you would be to go to the positions that you're interested in, search them up, look at their descriptions, see what kind of technologies are those companies requiring for that position, what kind of skills do they require, and start learning those skills, start mastering those technologies. And how can you master those technologies? Through side projects. If you're a first year or a sophomore, try to get as many internships as possible through which you can master those skills and technologies. If you're a junior who's looking for a summer internship and you don't have that relevant work experience, try to do as many side projects as possible. Remember, side projects are really important because they show that you have taken initiative. And for a lot of these big companies, such as the fan companies, initiative is one of the key traits that they're looking for within a candidate. And why is that? Because at most of your dream companies, the engineers are not free enough to, you know, really spoon feed you everything and to mentor you second by second. So they would require someone who takes initiative to polish their work and do the best that they can. My second tip for getting the interview is to get out of the not ready dilemma. Now I've seen a lot of people do this, even myself and my friends. So what happens is that we are constantly in the state of mind that we're not ready for applying to internships. We will feel the urge to practice more that we should maybe apply later when we're ready. But in most cases, by doing this, you're really missing out on a window of opportunity. Now my advice for you would be to apply as early as possible because you're going to learn through your experiences. When you get that interview, it's going to push you further. It's going to motivate you to learn more. A lot of people would say, but Mozam, what if we get our dream company to interview us next week? What will we do then? We're not ready for the interview. <laughs> There's a trick for that as well. Some people, what they do is, is they start applying from smaller companies to medium sized companies to their dream companies. And what they intend to do through this is to gain as much interview experience as they can so that when their dream company really interviews them, they're ready for that interview. If you're going to take my opinion on this, I wouldn't really recommend you to do that. I would recommend you to apply as early as possible so that you're getting considered as early as possible. Also, in most cases, companies like the FANG companies, they would take months to process your application. For example, in my case, I applied for my internship at Facebook in August, but I got my interview at the end of October. Well, a lot of you might be saying at this point that Mozim, you're missing the most important point. Well, I'm getting to that. And even though it may sound cliche, but do not apply without referrals. Referrals are really, really important in order to push your application. What really happens is when you're applying through a referral, your application is not going into the general pool. It's going into a special pool, which is taken into further consideration. There's a better chance that you'll get called for the interview through a applying with a referral. Now, a lot of people might say that, well, we do not know anyone in the company, so how should we get a referral? Well, getting a referral is very easy nowadays. What you can do is, is that you can go on LinkedIn, you can go to the company's page on LinkedIn, and you can filter through alumni. And filtering through alumni would allow you to see all of the alums that are working at the company. You can connect with them, you can message them, you can even cold message them. And that is something that I did personally. I, to be honest, did not like the artificial process that we had for getting referrals. That is 
you know really getting to know the person maybe calling them for coffee chatting with them at the end goal of getting a referral i would be very straight and upfront to the person that you know i need this referral are you willing to give it to me i'll spam it to maybe like 40 people and one of them would be willing enough to give it to me i thought that that was pretty easy to do and that was much more convenient as well there are various strategies to get a referral i think it's up to you you can also email people you can dm them on linkedin you can meet them through your career center and stuff like that you can always go to career fairs as well you know in my example i got my sophomore internship through a career fair and what happened was that i went to the career fair i networked with this person and i actually had applied for the job through their portal but i got rejected now what i did was is that i messaged that person through linkedin i asked them that this is my resume do you have a position that might be suitable for me and they immediately called me for the interview and i gave the interview and i passed it and got the job even though unfortunately it got cancelled due to covid emotional damn it also one more thing that i wanted to shed some light upon is that if you don't have a good enough gpa do not get discouraged because in the tech industry it does not really matter that much you can always omit your gpa from your resume as well as i don't think that it will matter for most of your dream companies but if you do have a good resume do make sure to include it because i feel that that might give you an advantage as well now let's move on to the second part of getting your dream internship that is acing the interviews so most interviews for software engineering intern positions or front end engineering intern positions would have two types of round it would either be the behavioral round or the technical rounds so my number one advice in this area would be to do research on the interview now you might be asking the question that how can i do research on the interview well in most cases the recruiter will clearly outline what kind of rounds you should expect and what kind of information that you are required to know for the interview some of the ways that i did research on interviews was through glassdoor what i did was that i went on to glassdoor and looked at the company and the position that i was interviewing for and then i would just review what kind of rounds have appeared in the past. One other trick that I would do is that I would message people who have interned maybe at the same position and ask them about their experience interviewing for the role and also asking them for some insights on how you can perform better and be more prepared for the interviews. Also lastly you can always email the recruiter for clarity. The recruiters are there for you to succeed. So make sure you get the best out of them and have access to as much knowledge as possible. My second advice for you to ace the interview would be to research whether there is a behavioral round and it is given as much weightage as to the technical interview. Now the best way that I have really prepared for my behavioral interviews is through the use of a story toolbox. Now as you can see this is the story toolbox and there are various topics that are listed over here. For each of these topics what you need to do is you need to write some scenarios that you have experienced in the past that fall under these categories. Now if you write one or more scenarios for these categories the chances are that whatever question that gets asked is just a new version or a modification of these topics. So the trick in a behavioral interview is that whenever you're asked a question you just need to fit it in one of these four categories and just tell the scenario that you listed for it now another advice for the behavioral interview would be to research on the company culture now this is really important because the company is always looking for candidates that are going to fit their culture now you need to think of your stories and scenarios in terms of how they would fit the company culture in the interview try to answer the behavioral questions in the terms that really shows that how you fit the company's culture and would make a great fit now let's come to the more interesting part which is the technical rounds now a lot of people get scared when they think of the technical rounds or the coding interviews to crack the coding interview you really need to have firm grasp on your data structures apart from data structures i would really recommend studying cracking the coding interview and doing lead code questions as much as possible to really understand the patterns that come across various topics and questions so that you may be able to decipher the question that is asked within the interview now this is not a paid promotion or anything but i personally used algo expert and i found it really really helpful because in lead code there are a lot lot of questions and you don't really know where to start and where to end but in algo expert you have a realistic achievable goal which is 160 questions and by doing those 160 questions you are assured that you'll have a firm grasp over the topics that are asked within the coding interview clement you better feature me now i'll have a separate video on this topic on how to practice your algorithms and questions so that you have a firm grasp over your technical interviews but the summary really is that you should practice as much as possible either through lead code algo expert or whatever platform that works 
works personally for you. One other solid advice for you would be to not go in the circular loop of studying data structures. Now, a lot of people, what they do is, as when they do a lead code question, they would get stuck or they won't be able to do it. And they would think that they need to brush up their data structures and they would go back on studying their data structures over and over again. What this really puts you in is a circular loop, which is never ending. Because to really grasp the type of questions that are asked in the interview, you need to practice lead code or algo expert or whatever platform that you're using. You need to solve questions because after solving questions, you're going to learn about the patterns. You're also going to learn about the data structures and how to use them and where to use them through those questions. So you are learning your data structures through those questions. So I'll definitely recommend that when you have a basic knowledge of your data structures, just dive deep into the questions, start solving them, and that will further your knowledge into data structures as well as algorithms. Now, another important thing is to focus on your code quality. Now, this is a thing that matters a lot because there are a lot of candidates that might be able to solve the question, but not a lot of candidates will have clean code. Try to modularize your code. Try to have separate functions for separate things. If you don't have time, that is fine. But do make it clear to the interviewer that if you had time, you would have made separate functions, maybe for this. Just try to communicate it verbally if you don't have time. Now, my other point would be to focus on your communication. Now, in the technical interview, getting to the solution is as important as communicating. Now, if you're not able to explain your thoughts properly while solving the problem, the interview might just assume that you just had the question solved beforehand. Always remember, over communicating is always better than not communicating within a technical interview. Try to speak as much as possible. And while you're speaking, do not think of whether you're right or wrong. Because even if you're wrong, the interviewer will know that you're going in the wrong direction and they will be able to guide you in the right direction. Another tip for you would be to practice as much as possible. Now, this practice could be either done through friends. You can gather near a whiteboard and start solving problems, maybe take rounds. First, you can interview them, they can interview you. This would really enable you to see it from the interviewer's perspective as well and see where people go wrong. Another option would be through a platform like Pram, where you could do mock interviews with other people. Also, another tip for you is that when you do not really know how to solve a question and you're completely going blank, start throwing data structures at the problem. Just start saying, oh, can you use a hash map? Can I use a binary tree? Maybe I can use a linked list. Try to maybe see how the data structure fits to that question. And through doing this, you might be able to come to the solution. You might be able to figure something out through a combination of data structures, or the interviewer would be able to guide you through which data structure would work best for the solution. Now, apart from solving the coding question, always have questions ready for the interviewer. Now, this is key because this demonstrates your interest, your presence of mind within the interview. You can ask questions about the company, maybe the work experience, of the person who's interviewing you. A kind of neat trick that I did is that I would ask the interviewer about their experience at the company or maybe the technology that is required for the position. And I would start to insert my own experiences into that conversation. And that would really demonstrate of how I'm well versed with the technology and how knowledgeable I am with it. For example, if you're giving a front end interview, at the end of the interview, you can ask the interviewer about their experience, maybe with JavaScript at the company or maybe with React. Now, while they're talking and they're telling about their experience, you can insert your own knowledge into it, knowledge that was maybe not asked within the interview, because that would give you a chance to really shine upon some topics that maybe you were not able to touch upon in the interview. Now, my last tip for you would be, and this is from a personal experience, is that if you have seen a question, either let the interviewer know that you have seen the question or act good enough so that the interview doesn't guess that you have seen the question. Now, there's a funny story to this. So once in an interview, I was actually asked the two-some problem, which is a very common problem within the technology technical interview scope. Now, according to my own experience, I did all the rounds well. I was able to solve all of the questions. Now I was awaiting for the call that would tell me that I'm hired. But guess what? The recruiter calls me and they tell me that one of the interviews told us that they thought that you had seen the question before. And I asked them which question and they said the two some problem. And I really couldn't believe what the recruiter had to say. It is funny enough, but it is actually a serious problem. So do definitely make sure that you either tell the interviewer or that you're good enough at acting out the problem. We've just got to keep our heads. Act normal. That is pretty much the advice that I have from my side covering both getting the interview and acing your interviews. I'll be making more videos upon specifically how to ace the technical interviews and how to practice for them. I think that this video should be able to give you a good outline of how you should prepare on getting your interviews and how you should prepare on acing your interviews. So I hope that you had fun watching as much as I had making this video. Do make sure to like the video if you found it informative. Subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more content.
and I hope to see you in the next video. Do let me know in the comment section below if you found some of these tips to be really insightful or shocking and stay tuned for more content.